this is the Excel, Excel practice test. I'm going through each page here. I'm on the first part here where you're doing a car finance. First thing you have to do is determine the amount. You have a down payment. It is subtracted. So it's equal this minus that. You don't add it. We've got the years that we're financing at the interest rate. We're going to be doing the monthly payment here. The monthly payment here, we can click on the FX or we can click on formulas. We go into financial and we find the PMT function. It's only one P in it. We click on that and then we have the rate there. Since we're paying this every year, we just divide it by 12. The number of payments. We're paying this car over four years, paying it every month times 12. The present value of the loan, we want it to appear as a positive number. Hit the minus sign first. And then we click on the 17,195. We say OK. So that's what we have there. Next thing here, I'm going into question number three here. I want to know what percent of my take home pay is going into the car payment. So you have a monthly pay, a monthly thing here. So all you have to do is divide equal this by this 21 and a half percent. We have to do an if statement here. We want to say that if we're spending less than 25%, we're going to save 12.5% of my pay, otherwise 3.5%. I'm going to click over here on the thing here to see if it shows if. If I go into most recently used, if. So I want to say if the percent of the car payment is less than 25%, you can literally type in 25 and the percent sign or 0.25 if it's true we're going to save this is our take home pay times 12 and a half percent or 0.125 if it's false again it's a take home pay times three and a half percent or we say okay so we're saving $231.25, and we're saying in page setup, page layout, click over here, sheet, grid lines, row and column headings. We could say print preview, hit the escape key. You should know how to do headers and footers. I'm going to go to the next tab, payroll. You've got assumptions down at the bottom here. And then we've all done this so much in class here. So it's equal this times this. I'm going to do them all across here. Then I'm going to just drag it down. The withholding tax is calculated on the gross pay. So it's equal gross pay times the withholding tax. Make it a constant with the F4 key. Social Security tax again equal this times this again constant net pay I think you know that one gross minus withholding minus this I want to pull it down. I can highlight all four. Pull it down. So we got that there. Totals. We want to know the total here. And I'm going to go on the home here. I click on auto sum. I don't want that bottom row. Get the white cross. Complete the formula. And then I could just copy this over to the right. I say just do the shaded areas. Get the white cross here. Get that dagger, you know it's going to happen. I want to know the highest gross pay. I go over here, max, highlight. I want to know the average gross pay. Again, click next to the there. Click on, oops, I hit the wrong one. Hit the escape. That is average, okay? 
I click over here and I think I made a mistake on the previous one no I didn't it is max look at things okay so we've got that here gonna go into the third part halfway done what we're gonna do here uh, we're doing a little bit of formatting here we highlight this range here merge and center highlight here merge and center and we're going to do A3 through K3 same thing here separate transactions merge and center now we're going to be naming a range here for shipping costs we're doing a VLOOKUP here so I say what the range is here I just highlight it. don't put the caption up above there so we've got that there I click right here and then I type in you cannot put spaces but by doing it with the underscore in between it's easier to read shipping costs so if I click out of here I click over here shipping cost okay so next thing we're gonna do we're gonna do V lookups in these two things here we have three columns it's going to be one column one two or three so for the cost of the box it's based on the cubic feet so it's the V lookup so the lookup value I'm just moving this over here this and then I'm just going to type in the range name spell it right you get the number showing there this is in um, cell number two column number two I meant to say say okay five dollars that's the cost of the box right there second column here. we're going to do this again we're going to do the V lookup again I'm going to click over on the cubic feet go into the table array column number three I can drag these down so we've got that we want to do totals and averages I say do not include blank rows so if I want to total up these numbers here I say F through K so if I do this I just go into the home tab auto sum I say don't put the blank rows in there okay pull it up enter and I'm going to do the average right over here average highlight this here pull this over to the right I'll show you a couple of little shortcut tricks here to do this pull this over here now when you're doing some of these formulas here I didn't explain this fully in the quiz or the practice thing here things do not I said F through K is the average F 28 through K 28 we do that there but these are not the correct no these are the correct here they are cost of the box here what we're spending on everything so everything is okay but this here like with the cubic feet here you're going to make the comma okay so you just have it formatted correctly because some things have currency and others do not I want to do the car sales this is the last sheet and what we're going to do here we're going to do a clustered column here I don't want this thing showing right now highlight this range here I go into here charts clustered column I have it we position I'm gonna pull this down a bit so you can see better so we did that we're gonna put a title here I click here 
I can go into the formula bar, Acme Car Sales. Enter. And I'm saying to format with a certain design style. You're on the design tab, you're on the graph here. I go into here, style 14. When you hold your mouse over, it gives you style numbers. So that is done here. Uh, two more steps here. Uh, three more actually. You want to make the maximum value of this axis 35. I'm going to click on the click right on here. Now click over here. Plus axes. More options. This gets a little tricky when I'm doing it. You have to click back on here. I lost it. And I say make it 35. Enter. So you can see how it changed. Next thing here, I want data labels on the inside end of the of the chart. Outside end, I should say. So to do this here, I could click on these or just click over here, stay on here. And then if I click on here, the plus here, and I'm going to say data labels, check that off. I missed the other one. I could click on here. And I'm going to say outside end. It worked there. And if I click here again, outside end. So you've got them there. Next thing I want to do is I want to change, put an um, axis over here, a label, a title called quantity. So what we do here, we click on axis titles, check this off. And it came up automatically, but I'm going to say primary vertical if that didn't appear. I'm in this selected here. Uh, I could highlight the words in here. I accidentally moved it. I undo. I could also just click inside the formula bar and tape, type in quantity. And I say make it bold. I can go on the home tab. Bold, 12 point. One thing I will mention, if you're ever printing something out, see how this chart is selected? If I go to print, it's just doing the chart, which is really great. But if you want everything, click off the chart. I'm print previewing it. It's showing the data and the table. So that completes this project.